I watched the Breakfast Club interview that you did like seven or eight years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm somebody who has previously said like, oh, you know, I miss the old Charlemagne or like, you know, he used to be all edgy and offensive and that was sick. And I watched that episode and I was just like, okay, I'm really glad that he left this persona behind because it was like, and it, not even to put it on him because Envy was doing the same thing. Envy tried me. And... I'm not even going to act all high and mighty because I've definitely done episodes where I was disrespectful to the person I was interviewing. And I'm obviously like viewing this through the lens of having respect for you. So like, to me, it just came off crazy. They're like making everything about sex. Every dude you mention, they're just like, Oh, you to him. Like, and it was just very like hard to listen to. It was like, gross. It, it was, was gross. actually weird and I actually like so now when I think about because I watched a Vlad actually did coincidentally a flashback clip today of Charlemagne kind of talking about the fact that as their show grew he had to kind of leave this like you know uh, over the top shock jock persona behind but holy does your interview with them exemplify that that's enough of me white knighting do you agree no definitely um, Vlad can go f himself by the way but we'll talk about that later oh really uh, yeah, I'll yeah. get to that later okay. so, uh, but anyway uh <laughs> So, and, and I said that, um, you know, I, I feel like Sharp probably should have watched that interview to mm. realize that there's nothing you can say to me that's going to take me off my square. At the, at the end of the day, at that time, my objective was to go on Hot 97 to get my song played. Mm -hmm. That was my objective, to get the radio spins. So I already knew that they were going to be coming at me crazy. And, you know, like like when uh, Birdman was on there and... And, you know, walked off the set and told him, what, what did he say? The tree, this, what? I don't remember what he said, but. He said, uh. It was, fuck. it was viral. I just watched DJ Envy talking about it. Well, we, that, that moment. Put some respect on my name. Yeah, put some respect on my name. Yeah. Like, you know, that, that part, like, for me, it's like, okay, your, your objective is to try and see me act like the person that you hope that I am or you think that I am or that I've been portrayed to be. Mm. My objective is to play my song on Hot 97. Right. So I'm not going to allow you to to shake me. And the, the crazy part is, like, if, if, if your persona, your image is a sexual image or, you know, I, I saw the, the porn podcast thing up there. Uh. Like, if, that, if that's what you're into, then great. Right. That's what you talk about. But where in society did we become so normalized with just talking to random people that we've never had sex with about sex? Right. Why does it matter who I've gotten in bed when I'm sitting at a table? With like, you? the tone of that podcast would be kind of normal if you were a porn star. Right. But it was, like, right. just the fact that you so clearly didn't really want that to be the tone of the conversation and made it, like, super hard to listen to. And, yeah. And, and that's just, like, pre-Me Too, pre, you know, woke era where everybody kind of thinks about, you know, women and what they want. Right. And, and a, lot, a lot more detail. And it's, like, I don't know. It just really, like, that's a remnant of, of that era that would be hard to imagine yeah. these days, honestly. You know, it, it's so common to disrespect women, especially black women. Mm. And and coming from black men, it's like, how dare you? And then watching Angelina just kind of sit there and she tried I, you to know, fight back at it a little bit, but she was kind of powerless. Yeah, I so. mean, I, I get her position too, but yeah. like, you know, it's only so long that you can jump in the cage with with buffoons. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And and I don't know if that's the reason why she branched off and and decided to do her own thing or not. You mm. know, but good for her. Um, you know, DJ Envy. It, it's just it's 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 comical to me when I come somewhere that I've been invited to go on. Mm -hmm. And clearly, you know, as you know, you have to, even if you don't know who's coming, you have to do your research so that you know what to discuss, what to talk about. Even if you've never seen me before in your life, when I come in that chair, you know who I am. Even you like, uh, uh, you know how mortified I would be if I accidentally like said that you had a baby with somebody that you didn't have a baby with? Cause that's how it starts. Is they're just like, oh, you have a baby with Young Berg. You're like, no, I don't. And it's just like, right. I, I would be hella embarrassed if I did that. But they clearly like, but really see, didn't like give they a fuck, like yeah. they they know that's not the case. Right. So they're hoping that that happens for the big aha moment. Mm. And it's like, I already know that you're trying to do that. So I'm not gonna give it to you because again, you're about to play my song. And, Shout out Young Berg. Huh? Nothing wrong with having a baby with Young Berg. I mean, hey, I don't have one, so I couldn't tell you. Right. <laughs> like, but to all the women who do. I don't think he has any kids. No? Well, I don't think so. But, you know, I'm also not keeping up. One, so. one day. Hey, you know, it's a great thing. I was supposed to interview Young Berg a long time ago. Uh, I should hit him up. Sure. Well, because he has a producer name now, too. I forget. He's like a big producer at this point. Yeah. Put some respect on Young Berg's name. You can. 
So you don't like them? Oh shit! Okay, I just realized I, I, I walked. In, I walked in on somebody. I have nothing to oh, say. All right, all right. My bad. My bad. I, I didn't mean to, to do say. anything here. No, all no, right. you did it. You, 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 you did it. I just, you know, yeah. Was that that Breakfast Club era though? Was, did, was that the vibe in a lot of situations as a as a woman coming up around that time? Oh, for sure. Yeah. You, know. you know, again, I felt like disrespect was what people. Um, got attention for. And again, you know, coming from a show like Love and Hip Hop, they're hoping that I'm going to act a fool. Mm. And, you know, that's just not the case. Um, I'm, I'm very well versed. I'm very well spoken. I'm very educated, you know, and, and when I, whatever it is that I'm trying to do, I'm going to get that done, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm going, I, I think I'm one of the best interviewers. I can address what I want to address, dance around a question and do a backflip on it. And, and, still come out on top. You're you know? a politician. Pretty much, you know, without, ha without even being media trained, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm, I know, I know what I need to get done. I know how it needs to happen. And nine times out of 10, I know how it's going to be portrayed. That's one of my favorite things in the debates and stuff is when they ask them like a question and then they just don't answer the question. They just start talking about something, something completely else. different. Like <laughs> that is an amazing skill. Yeah. And a lot of times I find myself on podcasts and I answer questions too literally where I'm like actually answering the exact question that they asked me. And it kind of like, which is great. It's, it's, it's just cause <laughs> that's kind of how my brain works. But then meanwhile, like I could have took that question in any kind of, you know, you, you have to kind of go into any interview or any conversation thinking about like what you want to exactly. put out there. Exactly. Have some objectives in mind. E exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So at that, that time my, my objective happened and you know, the funny thing is like, I feel like people don't want to like me and then they accidentally like me. And, you know, when I played this, the record I had at the time, it was my single called Undelay featuring Fetty Wap, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it's just so, it feels so weird calling them that. And, um, <laughs> you know, at, at that time, what, it was like 2016, I want to say. And, you know, that was his big year. He did the big one. You know, he was every, you couldn't turn on the radio without mm -hmm. hearing him. He was obviously one of the hottest artists of the year. So when we played the record, they wanted to hate it so bad. And I just remember the look on their faces like, I mean, it's not, we don't hate it. It's not bad. And the funniest thing is like, you're both huge fans of, of Fetty Wap. Huge. Mm -hmm. Especially you, DJ Penny, which is what I was calling him because he pretended like he couldn't pronounce my name. You know mm -hmm. my name. You've, you've said it 10 times. You probably said it in your sleep. You know my name. So, you know, and, and he like, I knew how much of a fan he was mm -hmm. of him at the time. So when I played the record, the song starts with Fetty Wap. It doesn't start with me. So before I even came on, they were like, I mean, it's decent. I mean, I said, that's how I know you're a hater. You didn't even listen because you haven't even heard me say a word yet. Mm. You just want to dislike it because it's mine. And then like, they were like, uh, okay. Oh, uh, okay. Keep playing. Keep playing. You actually didn't even realize that you accidentally insulted somebody that you're a fan of because it's affiliated with me. Mm -hmm. By the end of the interview, I don't know if you, you watched it to the end when I got up, uh, Charlemagne sniffed my chair like a weirdo. Oh, I, did, I, I didn't watch <laughs> like, like the last 10 or 15 minutes, but it was like, I love you. I love you because nothing he used you to did do could that. Break me. He used to do that a bit. I it think. was weird. And, and that was, I it think was he weird. He stopped doing that at a certain point. Yeah. It like, was I'm weird. all about offensive jokes, but definitely I feel like when the girl isn't putting her out there to be like in to an be, explicitly yeah. sexual role, that, exactly. that kind of stuff comes off weird. Exactly. You know? it, 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 it does come off weird. And then, you know, we all have jobs to do. But right. for two married men to be talking to someone like that is just weird. It's just weird. I need everybody to check out NoJumber.com. We officially started a blog. It has in-depth articles about current events, music, etc. Plus all of our content in terms of podcasts, interviews, etc. And you can get some exclusive new merch if you check out NoJumber.com. So make sure you tap in.